The Camino de Santiago is a network of paths leading to the shrine of St. James the Great in Santiago de Compostela. While the Camino is popular with hiking and biking enthusiasts, the majority of those who walk it see it as a form of spiritual retreat, even if they aren't necessarily believers in the Christian doctrine that informs the legend of St. James. These hikers call themselves peregrinos or pilgrims and they often return to hike the Camino multiple times, attracted to the kindness and camaraderie they share with the other pilgrims on the walk. Like many Americans, I learned about the Camino from a little movie called The Way, directed by Emilio Estevez and starring his father, Martin Sheen. I saw The Way in 2012, shortly after my father died, so the father-son vibe of the film resonated with me. When the film was over, I vowed to walk the Camino, even though I was out of shape and admittedly hated to hike. It took me four years to discover that I actually liked hiking, and another two years to get into shape. Even so, when I arrived in Spain in 2018, I decided to begin my Camino in Saria, which isn't the best starting point for the serious pilgrim. If you're not familiar with the Saria stage, let me explain. Saria to Santiago is kind of a Cliff Notes version of the Camino. It's only 113 kilometers, so it's kind of like dipping your toe in the ocean without really swimming. Those 113 kilometers do give you a nice hike, and you also get to enjoy the albergue experience. But since the walk only lasts about a week, it's hard to get a sense of what it really means to be a pilgrim on Camino. Nonetheless, in 2018, I thought I was pretty special just for being there. I pretentiously grinned and romanticized the experience. It already feels like I belong here. I waxed philosophical about pain. A lot of that connection comes through discomfort, pain, and suffering. But when I threw my back out in Arzua and enjoyed some real pain, I vowed I would never walk on the Camino again. I will not do this again. I didn't even make it to the cathedral the day I arrived in Santiago. When I was still on the outskirts of town, I called my wife Lauren and had her look for a cheap hotel. She found one over by the train station, and even though I was only three kilometers from the cathedral, I walked four kilometers straight to the hotel and slept for 10 hours. The next day, I made my way to the cathedral and realized how insufficient my walk had been. I didn't really feel like a pilgrim, nor did I feel that I had walked a real Camino. I felt incomplete, so much so that after Pilgrim's Mass in the cathedral, I made a new commitment. I made all the suffering worth it, and I'd do it again. Maybe I will do it again. Our story begins in Melbourne, Florida. We're going to head up to Atlanta, catch the flight over to Madrid. They say the Camino officially begins the moment you step out of your house, so officially I am on Camino now. Interestingly enough, the distance from here to Atlanta is 486 miles. The amount of uh, Camino I'll be walking is approximately 436 miles. So from here to Atlanta is only about 50 miles further than what I'll be walking in Spain over the next few weeks. So we're here in uh, Atlanta. We've got a about, a about a six hour layover till we leave. Been here about four hours. Uh, we are yeah, we're going to be boarding in about an hour. In fact, we actually be take off, but they're boarding now. Yeah, it's really happening. It's kind of weird. We have to have our passport going onto the plane and they have to do a facial recognition, which I've never seen in boarding a plane before, usually just in coming back to the country. So this is a new experience for me. Over here, 
here is the Puerta de Atocha. This is where I'm catching my train to Pamplona and the way to get to it, the best way from the airport to get to it is there is a yellow bus that takes you directly through the city center of Madrid and gets you here. It's about 40 minutes. As you can see, I'm rather haggard from the flight and the bus trip over here and then now I get up on a lovely train. So finally, we have made it to Pamplona. It is about, it's about almost three o'clock here, which means back home it is almost nine o'clock. And I left yesterday morning back home time about 9.50, so we're coming up on 24 hours. I walked over to this park on the west side of town just to familiarize myself with the way out of here. Also to get comfortable looking for those way markers again. It's been an emotional day because a year ago I was going to be doing this Camino and it was canceled. And it was just this summer I was out kind of doing some things and listening to the Camino podcast hosted by Jose. I don't say his full name because it's long. and. Uh, He's kind of one of my heroes. I see him on Instagram and listen to his podcast. I started crying because I thought, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get back. And then later that week, my wife said, you know, I think we have enough money. You can do the Camino this year. So I've been planning and now here I am in Pamplona. Tomorrow I start the Camino. And I've just been really emotional. And Jose, the podcast I was listening to, the host of the podcast, showed me around today. <laughs> This is the fastest part of the whole running of the bulls. Okay. The bulls, a lot of people, they think, oh, they will go faster going down. I'm like, no, they go faster going up. Really? Yeah. Wow. But these are the fences and people and these going... these are the fences and you can try to jump and see how <laughs> hard it is to go over. So it's part of the city walls. And you can mm -hmm. see here, you know, how it looks to look in the old days. Okay. So you're in the Cathedral de Santa Maria. Am I saying that right, Jose? Yeah, perfect. All right. So she, she's for the parades for the Saint San Fermin? No, San Fermin, no. They will be in October. That's the month of the Virgin. Mm -hmm. And here, here, they do like dinners, festivals, wine tasting. So it's not used just only for church. Also, they use different things. And that's also great. And the company that is doing this machine right now, they have a 3D printer for food. <laughs> they print a steak. I'm not kidding. Real steak. <laughs> steak. So what is this exactly? So this is called the bombeja. It's like a bomb. It was the winner of the 2017 uh, Pinchos competition. And it's a reduction of lamb with a bread made of, I don't remember, but it's just... Sorry, with my hands and such is dry ice. Yeah, just dry ice. And it has like a little thing, so don't worry, you're not going to burn yourself. You just can grab it and... Okay. Just go for it. <laughs> That's wild. You know, the Camino provides, they say that. It's on my hat here. The, you know, my friend said something to the effect a few weeks ago. He said something to the effect of, you know, I know you don't do this because you need the exercise, and I know it's not really a vacation for you, so there's got to be a deeper reason you feel compelled to do this. And I really don't know why, except I just know I have to. Something's telling me I have to do this again, and we, I'm going to, into it with less romance than I did last time. Last time I'd watched that movie with Martin Sheen, and I was like, so, I'm just really kind of overwhelmed that I'm here in Pamplona. The process, that's the suitcase I brought everything. I even put the backpack in there, and now I'm taking stuff out that's not going with me, and we're going to mail this to on to Santiago. There's a storage unit there that takes luggage of pilgrims. Looking for the post office. We are mailing the suitcase on to Santiago. I'm effing here. <laughs> All right, let's do it. 